The CDC says one person dies from heart disease in the U.S. every 37 seconds. That's why it's so important that we keep talking about ways to prevent and treat it. We're covering that very topic coming up on Being Well. For over 50 years, Horizon Health has been keeping you and your family healthy. And although some things have changed, Horizon Health's commitment to meet the ever-changing needs of our community has remained the same. Horizon Health, 50 years strong. They're the ones who raise the bar. The ones dedicated to providing care in the most demanding of circumstances the ones that understand the healing benefits of kindness and compassion. They're the people of Sarah Bush Lincoln, and they set the bar high. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care, right here, close to home. Carl is redefining healthcare around you, innovating new solutions and offering all levels of care when and where you need it. Investing in technology and research to optimize healthcare, Carl, with Health Alliance, is always at the forefront to help you thrive. Thank you so much for joining us today for Being Well. I'm your host, Lacey Spence, and today we are talking about the ever important topic of heart health. Uh, joining us today, we have Dr. Michael Lamonto from Sarah Bush Lincoln Hospital. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Great to A, be here. Uh, regular of the show. Yeah, uh, I guess, yes. <laughs> And so heart health is always important. And so um, let's talk a little bit about what's going on at Sarah Bush as far as um, you got some great folks in your office and maybe a little transition happening. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's been quite a transition. Um, you know, it's very well known in the community about what's been going on. For many years, we've had a partnership with Prairie Cardiovascular, uh, which has been serving our uh, community very well. Uh, Dr. Dande and Dr. Traeger and myself were in the office for years together. Um, unfortunately, that contract has broken down uh, for many reasons that I'm not even privy to. But uh, in order to keep continuity of care with our community, uh, the hospital has hired on Dr. Lakshmi and also Dr. Katsimakis. Um, Dr. Katsimakis is our interventional cardiologist. He does our heart caths and our coronary stenting and things like that. And Dr. Lakshmi uh, is a clinical cardiologist like I am. You know, the really interesting thing about both of them is that they were both here at Sarah Bush many years ago. About 10, 10, 12 years ago, both of them were practicing here at Sarah Bush initially. Dr. Lakshmi went off into uh, Champaign area at Christie Clinic, and Dr. Katsimakis went back up to Chicago uh, in the northern suburbs where he was practicing for over 10 years. But uh, interestingly, they both liked it so much here, uh, they ended up coming back. So it's kind of like a, kind of like a high school reunion, uh, everybody coming back into the office. And it's going really well right now. We've had great feedback from people uh, they're very well liked. Uh, the staff is getting well, uh, getting along well, and it's going really well. Awesome. And you kind of talk about um, having this hometown reunion kind of feel. Um, can you talk about that level of care? Because it's kind of like, I mean, I've got at least two family members that work at Sarah Bush, so it's sure. locals taking care of locals. It is. It is. And it's great that you would say something like that because that's what, you know, that's what I've always tried to strive for. Um, I came from a small town in the uh, south suburbs of Chicago, which is no longer such a small town because mm -hmm. it's Chicagoland area. And we came down here, my wife and I came down here 15 years ago. We've raised our children here. Um, you know, uh, we've uh, become part of the community here and we just really enjoy it here. And I've practiced in Chicago, I've trained in Chicago at multiple hospitals, large hospitals, small hospitals, so I know how things work in the big cities. And I have to say that we tr medically you may not treat people differently, like with medicines or surgeries, but just interpersonally. Being in a small town is different, you know? In a big city like Chicago or St. Louis or even Champaign or Springfield, 
you know, you could get lost in the shuffle at a, at a large facility. But here, I see people that I take care of at Walmart, mm -hmm. at, the Mattoon, uh, at the Mattoon Cruise Night. You know, I wave into my patients, uh, you know, in their cars and they see me and, you know, uh, just the other day uh, I was at Yoder's. Uh, my, my wife and family and I were having dinner at Yoder's and I saw two of my patients there, you know. So I think you treat people a little bit differently. And I like to think that I treat everybody as my neighbor because around here everybody is because you see each other all the time. Mm-hmm. And in an era when doctors don't really make house calls anymore, I mean, to yeah. be able to go that extra mile is very much appreciated, yeah. especially from the patient perspective. Well, good. And so as you are looking at the services that are offered um, at Sarah Bush, has anything changed or what kind of procedures are still out there? Right. Uh, no, nothing has changed from previous. Um, basically, it, it it's amazing what we have here in our little town, you know, this cardiac center that was built last year is state of the art. It's gorgeous. If you haven't been there, you should come. Uh, you know, they have they have people come all the time just wanting to look around, and the the secretaries out front walk people back, and uh, they have uh, administration still has uh, some people coming through tours and things like that. Um, but I would put our facility up to anything in the Chicagoland area. You know. Um, you know, when you think of heart procedures, everybody thinks about heart catheterizations, a cardiac catheterization or a heart angiogram. It's all kind of the same thing. That's where uh, we go in through the artery in the wrist or through the leg, take pictures of the heart arteries, and if you need a stent put in, we can put those in here at Sarah Bush. Uh, Dr. Katsimakis also does peripheral uh, procedures, which means if your arm is blocked or your leg is blocked, that can be opened up. We do all kinds of the bread and butter basic stuff like echocardiograms, which is an ultrasound of the heart. Basically, it's the same thing as a baby ultrasound, black and white moving pictures, but it's your heart and you get you can actually watch your heart beating and the valves moving and things. It's pretty interesting. We do stress testing, all kinds of different things like that. Plus, just seeing our clinic patients in the heart center and then even uh, inpatient care is uh, right above the clinic. So, you know, when we, have peop when we have people admitted to the hospital, all I gotta do is get on the elevator and go upstairs and my inpatients are right there if there's a problem. So it's, it's really a great situation. And can you tell me a little bit about, um, there's METS, there's mm -hmm. services for folks with COPD as well, kind of in yeah. that same area? Oh yeah, absolutely. So we have something called the Met Center or the Cardiac Rehab Center. And again, you know, I've been to many different hospitals, many different places, and I, our, our, our center is just really cool. I didn't, I didn't build it, you know, I didn't design it, I didn't yeah. do anything like that, I just work there. But I'm just so impressed. And our staff there, again, they treat folks like neighbors because we get to know people over the course of years and years. Um, and basically what it is, is it's an exercise facility, mm -hmm. but your heart is monitored during that time. And you're monitored in different ways, depending on what stage of heart disease you are. And those are all details that we can't really get into now. But, you know, it's an exercise facility and they're monitoring your heart and we have trained people to do that. Then they give lectures every day on a bunch of different topics like diabetes and blood pressure and lung disease and smoking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we have people that will come for, you know, several weeks and then quit. We have people that have been there for 15, 17 years and they're faithful because they just enjoy being there. Mm -hmm. A similar situation that's called cardiac rehab. A similar situation is called pulmonary rehab. Most of the same people, it's the same facility, just different class with a focus on lung disease instead of heart disease. And people exercise differently. There's oxygen available if you need oxygen. And the whole point of this is to try to build the patient back up after a pneumonia or a heart attack or heart surgery or something like that to build them back up to get your heart or your lungs working the best that they can. And again, 
the facilities are gorgeous and I would put them up against any that I've ever been at. And so as we're talking about um, heart health and there's definitely a lot of stages of it, just mm -hmm. to kind of start in the infancy of it, um, at what point do I need to see a doctor if I'm having, what, what steps, uh, heart pain, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. what have you? Okay, great. You know, one of the most common things that we see is uh, people that are at risk for heart disease. Now, heart disease could mean lots of things. There's whole books, you know, this thick written mm -hmm. on what is heart disease. The one people most commonly think of is coronary artery disease, which is blockages. Um, it causes heart attacks. Um, that's what people get stents for and open heart surgery, things like that. Um, what I tell people is everybody is different. Everybody is different. Everybody feels different things. Women especially feel things differently than men. The textbook, oh, I have a pressure in my chest that's going into my arm making me sweat and feel bad. That actually, that happens, but not as often as you think. Heart disease could be feeling nauseated when you're walking upstairs. It could be getting out of breath quicker than you think you should. It could be passing out. It could be flutters in your chest. It could be any type of symptom. So what I tell people is, you know, use your common sense. If it's bothering you, tell somebody, mm -hmm. you know. I tell people sometimes, look, if it's not bothering you, don't bother it. But if it's bothering you, you call me and we'll bother it, you know. Because there's no, there's no, people don't just fit into these little notches. There's a spectrum. And so that's what makes medicine so complicated, but also so interesting, is because you can't just look it up on Google and say, oh, I know what to do. It's As never. As a lot of people like to do. Everybody <laughs> likes to do. And I tell people, you know, Google can be dangerous, but it's just, but that's why it takes you know, 20 years to become a doctor because you can memorize all of the Google stuff, but it's the nuances. It's how does, how is this affecting this person? How is this affecting that person? What are the interactions of other disease processes? Things like that. That's why it takes 20 years to learn all this stuff because it's not just put in my symptoms, there it is. But the answer to your question is, when should I see a doctor? Whenever you're concerned. Mm -hmm. And don't waste time, you know. If you're a smoker, if you're diabetic, if you have a family history of heart disease, if you have high blood pressure, come see us. That's what we do every day, and we're all willing to help and just waiting for you. And speaking of that, do I need to have a referral to see you, or how does that work? You know, that depends on everybody's insurance. Okay. You know, it's funny because I, I always tell people, I don't pay attention to insurance, and I, I don't. I don't, you know, when people come in, I have no idea what their insurance is. And I don't want to know because if you knew somebody had really good insurance versus really bad insurance, you might be tempted to treat someone a little differently. Mm -hmm. But again, with the philosophy of everybody's my neighbor, I treat everybody like they're my mom or my brother or my sister. Everybody is every, everybody's equal, you know. And so the question of a referral is, of course, first call your regular doctor, and then that doctor will probably send you to us. There are people that just show up saying, you know, uh, I don't really have a doctor, but I want my heart checked out. And we say, come on in. <laughs> we'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure it out. And so let's say I'm somebody who's actually gone through um, having a heart attack, having stents put in and stuff, um, and I haven't been taking care of myself ah. like I need to. Yes. Is there a point of no return or is there some hope there to get on good habits? How does... You know, that's a really great question and nobody's ever put it to me that way before. The answer is, yeah, sometimes there is a point of no return, you know. You know, the heart is a very, it's an amazing, complex, wonderful machine. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a scripture that says we are fearfully and wonderfully made, you know. And in studying medicine, I see the marvel of it, you know. The heart is an amazing machine, but it is a machine. And I've driven a lot of beater cars, all right? There are yeah. times when you just can't get that car running again, you know. Uh, you know, you crack the block or you throw a rod and, you know, that, that car ain't coming back, you know. So there are times when you can let yourself go too far and there is a point of no return. 
But until that point happens, there is always hope. There is always, um, we all know the right things to do. We all know, don't smoke. If you have diabetes, get your sugar under control. If you have high blood pressure, get it under control. If you have high cholesterol, watch what you eat and do the right things. We all know that. Doing it is a lot harder than knowing it. Mm -hmm. And I speak for myself, you know. I have struggled with my weight all my life. And I tell people, look, you know, if we were all 120 pounds and uh, we were vegetarians, none of us would probably have many of these problems. Mm -hmm. But we're not, you know. But we do the best we can. Me personally, I do the best I can. I try to eat as healthy as I can for myself and for my children. I ask my patients just to do the same, you know. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's a very complicated question of what can I do from here on out. Basically, if you come in and talk with us, we get you on a plan. What I like to do is I like to go through everybody's medications. I say, this is why you're on this. This is why you're on this. This is why you're on this. And there's reasons for everything. Mm -hmm. And I believe personally that an educated patient, if you know what you're doing and why you're doing it, you will do it more often than not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I'm just a doctor that walks in and says, here, take this pill and see me in six months. Well, that doesn't help you and it doesn't help me. But if I say, here's why I want you to do this. Here's why I want you to go to the Met Center. Here's why I want you to lose weight. Here's why I want you to get your diabetes under control. Then people understand and they're like, oh, okay, now I can take care of myself better. Of the risks that, um, I guess I don't even want to call them risks, um, the lifestyle choices mm -hmm. that you just discussed, yeah. which is the most detrimental uh, picking back up after heart disease? Oh, Because I'm also thinking in the back of my head it might be smoking. Yes, absolutely. Smoking is kerosene on a campfire. It is absolute, it is absolute gas on a fire. You know, the thing is, you know, even small, and I have a lot of patients that, you know, they're two pack a day smokers, three pack a day smokers, they're down to a pack a day. Good for you, that's awesome. I am very happy about that. But getting all the way off is vastly better, you know. Let's say smoking three packs a day gives you this much risk, okay? Mm -hmm. If you cut down to one pack a day, you go down about that far, okay? Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of risk there, but you have cut it back. But if you quit altogether, you bring it down way down. Even, and it's actually been shown that even when people smoke three or four cigarettes a day, it still keeps you at a higher wow. risk. That's how dangerous it is. The next two in line are diabetes and weight, you mm -hmm. know? Diabetes, again, high blood sugars in the setting of heart disease, it's just gas on a campfire, you know? Um, so the main two, smoking, diabetes. So, and it's interesting because I see a lot of people that they're two pack a day smokers, they come into the hospital, we do a heart angiogram, we discover, wow, man, you got a lot of problems here and they need open heart surgery. So they go through all of that and everything that's entailed there, the pain and the rehab and the healing and being off work and everything. And I see them a few weeks later and they're like, man, I've stopped smoking, I'm doing this, I'm exercising. I'm like, good for you, keep it up. And then I see them three months later, well, you know, I stopped exercising, but I haven't gone back to smoking yet. And then I see him three months later and well, I'm smoking again, but not that much. And, you know, I say, you know, the shock of all that just wore off mm -hmm. and you're going back to your old ways. And if you don't want to go back to that hospital and be in that hospital bed with a big cut on your chest, you need to do something different here. Is there a good happy medium? I mean, definitely the uh, stopping smoking, like that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a moot point, but as far as the diet and exercise, how do you kind of add that into your lifestyle so that it's not so overwhelming? Because I know it can yeah. go from zero to 100, especially after open heart surgery. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
Boy, uh, there are about 10,000 books written on the yeah. how-to of diet and exercise, aren't there? And <laughs> we, we all, I mean, again, you know, honestly, you know, we all, do I exercise as much as I should? No, because it's early in the morning and sometimes I don't want to get on the elliptical or do pio in the morning or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, you know, I went to Yoder's the other day, you know, that the fried chicken is not on the heart diet, you know, <laughs> and it is what it is, yeah. right? But, um, you know, that's really what METS is for, that mm -hmm. cardiac rehab that we talked about. People with significant heart disease or lung disease, we get them involved in the METS program. And there, it's not just exercise, it's education. Okay. And it's the lectures that are given. It's like, and it, again, it's the why of why do we pursue a healthier lifestyle from here on out? And there are people that have been poster children for heart surgery. They were three pack a day smokers, way overweight, diabetes out of control. I see them six months later, they've lost 20 pounds, they're doing great, their diabetes is under control, they're not smoking. And they carry that out for years and it's a wonderful thing to see. And unfortunately, I don't wanna bring the mood down, but sure. once you hit that point of no return, yeah. and um, what is that next step? Is it usually mm. replacing part of the heart or how does that? You can, if you're a candidate, there is there are things like heart transplantation. Mm -hmm. There are things that we call LVADs, which are called left ventricular assist devices. That's what Vice President Cheney had. Um, his heart, he had terrible heart disease and he had so many heart attacks. The rumor was while he was giving speeches sometimes on TV, he would be having a heart attack. You know, I mean, that's how bad this guy was. Yeah. And they ended up, uh, basically it's a pump that they can put in the heart and you wear battery packs like little, you know, six shooter, uh, you know, uh, holsters, mm -hmm. under the arm holsters. Um, and that can keep your heart running if you have heart failure. There's transplantation. And these are the reasons, these advanced procedures are reasons why we partner with tertiary care centers like Washington University and University of Chicago and places like that. Um, that is a very end of the line issue. And truthfully, that process is so complicated, not many people actually qualify for that. So if you're 75 years old, you have terrible heart disease, you're in heart failure, there's nothing we can do to fix the arteries, sometimes that is the end of the road and you're not a candidate for transplant or LVAD or things like that. And that's when, again, our hospital has services like that. We have something called palliative care to keep people comfortable, to make sure you're not in pain, to make sure you're not swelling up with fluid. You have help at home to do your daily living so you have dignity at home. Um, there are many, many kinds of services you can give. And um, unfortunately, you know, we all die eventually. Um, and we all make our choices. Um, we're here to try to help you make better choices and to try to improve the quality of life to as best as we possibly can. Is that why it's so important to have advances in the technology for these different treatment methods? Sure, sure. Because yes, and believe me, there have been so many advances in the last, even the even the uh, the, the last four years that I've been here mm -hmm. uh, in the cardiology department. There are you can replace valves now. It used to be like heart valves would go bad. You'd have to open up the chest and cut the heart open and do all these things. There are aortic valve replacements that they can do through a cut that big in your chest with robots. There's a valve now that they can do. They actually go up through your leg with a wire and they can replace your valve without ever making a cut in the chest. I mean, amazing things and these are changing people's lives. You know, you could be a, what we call a cardiac cripple, meaning, you know, you can't walk from here to the bathroom 10 feet without having to stop and be out of breath. You know, that's, you know, your life is, you're stuck in a chair. Mm -hmm. You know, they can get this valve surgery and changes their life. They go to Mets and they're walking on the treadmill and they're going to Walmart and they don't have to lean on the cart so much. I mean, it's amazing. And in our last minute, do you have any advice for anybody watching at home? Uh, maybe those who are kind of nervous about talking to their doctor about what they're dealing with. Sure, sure. Um, that's our job. You know, our my job is to talk to you and listen to you. Um, we are very willing at any time 
to have a discussion with people about any concerns you might have. Um, you know, we do so again, just in just to try to take care of you, just to try to give advice. I tell people, you know, it is your body, it is your choice, and whatever choices you make, I will back you up as your doctor, and I'll be your doctor even if I agree or disagree with your choices. But if we can talk and if we can learn together and we can be a partnership, I think that just brings better health for everybody. So, Very well put. Mm, thanks. All right. Well, thank you for being here, Dr. Lamont. Sure. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Of course. And we will see you next time for being well. Carl is redefining healthcare around you, innovating new solutions and offering all levels of care when and where you need it. Investing in technology and research to optimize healthcare, Carl with Health Alliance is always at the forefront to help you thrive. They're the ones who raise the bar. The ones dedicated to providing care in the most demanding of circumstances. The ones that understand the healing benefits of kindness and compassion. They're the people of Sarah Bush Lincoln, and they set the bar high. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care right here, close to home. For over 50 years, Horizon Health has been keeping you and your family healthy. And although some things have changed, Horizon Health's commitment to meet the ever-changing needs of our community has remained the same. Horizon Health, 50 years strong.